Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about double strand break repair. So double strand break DSB repair. And I saw something interesting about human cells, average human cells, experiencing 10 to 100 DSBs per day. So 10 to 100 double strand breaks per day. Wow, that is seems really high. And uh, it's really interesting. And I haven't really seen the research on that myself. I want to check that out, but wow, if it's true, uh, and if it is true, it's a good thing cells have a couple of mechanisms to repair double strand breaks, right? Okay, so what is a double strand break? Very simple. Let's say this is a gene right here on a chromosome. And double strand break is that. Okay, the DNA is broken. So both strands of the DNA molecule are broken. And as we, you know, we talked about, and when we were talking about telomere structure, right? We're not supposed to have naked ends of DNA in the cell. That's usually a sign of, of trouble and the cell doesn't like it. And it has repair enzymes that will try to repair this. And, and we are going to talk about a specific repair process in this video called homologous recombination repair. So homologous recombination repair is a repair process that repairs double strand break. So it's a type of double strand break repair, HRR. And we can divide, and, and the good thing about this process right here is it is high fidelity. So even though both strands are broken, and when both strands are broken, you know, you can't use one strand as a template to fix the other. Both strands are broken. So there's a high potential to lose genetic information with a break like that. But homologous recombination repair, it can take care of that, and we can repair, the cells can repair this double strand break without losing genetic information. And there are some things called advanced concepts called gene conversion uh, that can occur as a result of repair. And if you're interested in that and the details of the mechanism that I'm just about, I'm gonna go over, um, but if you're interested in the details and the names of the enzymes that are involved in this process, uh, again, take BSC 350. BSC 350 here at Illinois State University. And uh, we'll talk about this mechanism in a lot more detail than I'm going to cover in this course. So homologous recombination repair, we can divide this into four simple steps. First step is gonna be end processing. Second step is going to be strand exchange. Third step, DNA synthesis. And finally, resolution and ligation. We're gonna call this one, I like to call this one the detangling step. My daughters have detangler, so they would appreciate the step. They use a lot of detangler. So, okay, so let me see, How? what is the best way to go over this? Let me start by diagramming a DNA molecule. And I'm gonna put the three prime end up top there. So this is a DNA molecule that has undergone a double strand break. And there is the DSB right there. So 
And now this DNA molecule needs to be repaired and we're gonna call this molecule the recipient because it's going to receive information. We lost some information with this double strand break. You know, maybe we lost some basis here. We're definitely gonna lose some in a second. I'll show you why. But it's gonna have to receive information from a, another strand, from a donor template. So to start, the strand that is broken, or the DNA molecule, I should say, that is broken is the recipient molecule. Now the first step, end processing, right? End processing. So what does that mean? Well, it means, so see this, we can see the three prime and five prime ends of this DNA molecule. Well, with end processing, from the double strand break, what happens is the five prime ends get chewed back. So here's a five prime end right here. That's gonna get chewed back by an exonuclease. Same thing down here, that's gonna get chewed back. And we're gonna leave three prime over overhangs. Let me see. Oh, I died. I, uh, I, I uh, made a mistake. I made a mistake. Okay. So the five prime end got chewed away. So we have this long three, three prime single stranded overhang. What, why is it called an overhang? Well, it's overhanging this, this piece over here, right? This is the end of the double stranded DNA molecule right here. And keep in mind, this goes on over here, off the diagram there. This is overhanging this this end right here. So three prime overhang. How do we know this is three prime? Because the five prime end is over here. So that's the three prime. Same thing up here. This five prime end is gonna be chewed away. So we're gonna get this thing over here. Chewed away by an exonuclease. Okay, so we got these little three prime ends here that are single stranded. Now the next step it's going to be strand exchange. So what is going to be strand exchange with what, right? So this is where the donor molecule comes in, right? Now, during the cell cycle, right, this uh, G2 phase, at S phase, later, later in S phase and in the G2 phase, that's when chromosomes can be made up of two sister chromatids. So a sister chromatid can serve as the donor template, right? So remember this structure we used to diagram in early parts of the in early part of this course. So after S phase, single chromatid, you know, becomes two sister chromatids. And if there's a double strand break here, well, this chromatid over here can be used as the donor template. Okay, so what happens? Now, this is pretty remarkable. So what's the best way to do this? Okay, so let me, okay, I'll diagram the donor template down here. And this is gonna be a displacement loop. So, so truly remarkable here, proteins that are involved in this process somehow grab these ends right here and use them to search the sister chromatid for homology. So for a, sim for a similar sequence, and they, they test the sequence by complementary base pairing, and they need to form a displacement loop for that to happen. So let's say this is the donor template with a displacement loop there. And I'm gonna diagram this one first. So this strand right here is grabbed by homologous recombination repair proteins, and it's used to test the donor template for the region that matches, or the donor molecule for a region that matches. And okay, let's say it finds a match here. Now the same thing happens at this end. and it finds a match. Okay, so we have all these single bases here. 
not hydrogen bound. Oh, it's hydrogen bound to the, that one, right? This is hydrogen bound to the basis here. Okay, so at this stage right here, what can happen is, let me see, DNA synthesis, right? Okay, DNA synthesis happens. So I'm gonna put, I don't wanna put three here. I just want to say that DNA synthesis is gonna happen in here after after we get some annealing going on here, after the, the complementary regions have been identified in the donor DNA molecule. Well, DNA polymerase comes in and synthesizes. Okay. Now, all this has been pretty well worked out, except, you know what hasn't been worked out? This, no one really knows how this DNA polymerase goes from synthesizing down here and it's able to jump up, you know, somehow we're able to connect this piece up here and then there's gonna be a nick here where ligase needs to come in and seal that nick. But eventually we end up with something like that. Okay, and DNA polymerase is gonna to have to synthesize here. I wish I had drawn those, those bases on the other side of this DNA molecule. Okay, and eventually it's gonna, it's, the DNA synthesis is gonna fill that in and eventually we're gonna need a ligase to come in here. Okay, so we have a ligase here, ligase here. This is pretty neat too, right? We had double strand breaks. Two, two um, phosphodiester linkages were broken here and we have a phosphodiester linkage placed here and another one placed here. Okay, so so we've repaired the break, but we've end up we ended up with this like tangled mess right here, right? And the diagram's not very neat, but now what happens is now that we've got all the bonds synthesized and the in the gaps uh, filled in and everything's double stranded, it's not really drawn double stranded. I should should have done a better job with that. You can check check the notes for a uh, professionally prepared diagram um, that I found somewhere on the internet. But now at this stage, resolution and ligation. So all this is tangled. We have these tangled molecules here, right? So what comes in is some, uh, some endonucleases, which are enzymes that cut DNA, and some ligases come in here. And what they do, or technically I think they're called topoisomerases, but they come in here and they're gonna untangle this, right? So, so as a result, we can end up with, with two possibilities. So let's see, what's the best way? I think I want to, yes, okay. So this is gonna be the resolution in ligation detangling step. So after that's, and cut right here and cut right here and then we have two molecules one down here one down here everything's great the double strand break has been repaired and so that might look something like this okay one there the recipient has been repaired and here's the donor I'm not going to use two different colors here okay great great now there's something else I want to address here now now I kind of already went over this. So where is the recipient? Where is the donor? Now let's say, okay, I, I diagram the chromatin condensed like we do during mitosis, but it doesn't necessarily need to be condensed. But I just want to point out that, okay, here's a loop of DNA I'm pulling from this chromatin. Okay, so I pulled it from the chromatid there so we can see it. And let's say this is where the double strand break is, right in here. Okay, so there's the double strand break. Now that searching process and that strand invasion process, well, okay, it's gotta search this, this thing has to be searched over here, right? Okay, so I can pull this loop out. Okay, now, so the search 
of uh, this donor template has to occur and then this these molecules over here have to be used by the HRR proteins to identify complementary bases in this little loop over here and the, how that works you know that's, that's it's just it's amazing I find it amazing that that can happen um, but there's another possibility too so we have this structure that is possible with the recipient and the donor down here but the detangling step could work also like this. So the DNA molecules have been untangled. And here's one. And so now I have them diagrammed and they're not tangled. Let's just say one molecule is, is lying on top of the other. What does that look like? Does that this look familiar at all? Maybe to the, the, the first part of the course? It's gonna be a crossover, right? So during meiosis, HRR is the process that is, is thought to, to lead to crossovers. So instead of the sister chromatid being the donor, template for fixing the recipient instead the homologous a chromatid from the homologous chromosome is used and there's thought to be some mechanism that that prevents the sister chromatid from being used and promotes the homologous chromosome to be used so let's say there's a double strand break there and there's one over here there's two of them let's say So again, I'm just pulling loops of DNA. So easy, right? So easy to pull loops of DNA from this, this condensed, uh, this chromosome with condensed DNA. Now, double strand break. Let's say there's a DSB here, DSB here. Now, these will search the homologous chromosome. And during meiosis, these would be a lot more tightly associated, right? like in the synaptonemal complex. But how they end up paired in the first place, you know, is this this process of searching during HRR the process that allows them to be paired in the first place? We don't really know. We don't really know if that's the case. But let me pull some DNA from here. And I'll pull one from here. This one's not supposed to be broken, but unfortunately it overlaps with the DSB there, so it looks like it's broken with the, with the letters DSB. Okay, so if this is the donor molecule, and this is the recipient molecule, we're gonna get that tangling step between this DSB here and this thing over here. And if it's resolved like this, well then we won't get a crossover. But if it's resolved like this, if it's detangled and we end up with after detang the detangling step and they join the molecules back together, those enzymes join the molecules together. If they join them like this, well then we'll get a crossover with this part over here being linked to this part up here and this part up here being linked to that part down there. Uh, same thing, same thing can occur down here. Now, where do these double strand breaks come from during meiosis? There's an enzyme called SPO11. So enzyme that, that makes makes DSB. So this, this enzyme, it's, a, it, it's found in eukaryotes and it's expressed during meiosis and actually goes through and puts double strand breaks in the chromosomes so it can facilitate this process. So I said double strand breaks are really bad, right? But during meiosis, the cell actually needs them in order to promote crossing over and it has an enzyme that actually puts those, those double strand breaks uh, in, in, in many places throughout the genome. Uh, okay, so that's it for homologous recombination repair of a double strand break. In the next video, we'll take a brief look at another double strand break repair process called non-homologous end joining.